They grew up together. They played the same sports. They attended the same schools. And now they even teach together. You're listening to DC and DH on the D&D Dynamite 80s podcast. Let's start another one. All righty. Let's do that. Let's start another one. Uh, we've been busy here lately, uh, but we are thrilled to have Catherine Mary Stewart with us today. And I hope my research is right. I hope it's close. Over 30 years in the business. Uh, 50, uh, this particular information gave me 50 different kinds of productions that you've been involved in. I'm, uh-huh. sure, I'm sure it's a few more than that. Uh, but that's uh-huh. TV, that's film, and theater. So mm-hmm. it's a wide range of talent, that's for sure. Oh, Catherine, thank how you. are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, doing fantastic. Trying to Down stay cool. Down there in cool. Nashville. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The humidity is a killer, I'm telling you. Um, yeah. yeah, let me let me start out with this first. Um, what, you know, and it's it's the normal thing, but mm-hmm. it, it, it's important, it's important, uh, I think, uh, to know. Uh, what in the world got you involved in this? in that <laughs> line of work? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I started out as a dancer. I, I mean, I've always feel like I've always been kind of animated. My family is sort of a big personality family anyway. And, but they're also um, academics. My dad is mm. a professor. My mom was a physiologist. Uh, yeah. And, um, but... Uh, I went to one of my dad's lectures one time and I, I, I watched him lecturing biology 101 and he was describing um, the purpose of a bird's beak or something like this. Uh-huh. And I'm like, and he was so animated. He, he put his head literally under an overhead projector and was like with his lips trying to imitate a yeah. beak. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's where I get it from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, teachers that, do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a performance. Good teachers do, that's for yes. sure. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, because you got to keep the kids interested, sure. right? You sure. got to, ha- you got to, yeah, make it something interesting or entertaining for them to watch <laughs> so that exactly they can right. absorb it and pay attention. Sure. So, I mean, that was his stage. Um, I wasn't so much uh, an academic per se, but I have to give my mother full credit. She's the one who kept trying to lead me down a path that suited me and it started out with you know gymnastics because i was very skinny and i had and small as a kid so i sort of had the appropriate body for that actually before that even it started out with ballet which i hated i hated it it was way too structured and disciplined for me um then i got into gymnastics and we did tried arts and i played piano for years and years and that sort of thing and then she um she encouraged me at school to take acting classes, which, mm. so it was middle school for me. And I was like, there is no way, because actors or people that perform are generally really shy. <laughs> and oh. it's sort of a way of covering up their shyness is creating these characters. Or the opposite. Okay. Exactly. Oh, wow. And um, okay. I was like, there's no way I'm getting on a stage in front of a bunch of other kids and, and pretending to be... So- it just scared them. It, it, it was so intimidating to me, mm. as it is for most people, I think, before they actually do it. And then I agreed to do this class. And I mean, it was almost instantaneous how I enjoyed it so much. I mean, I just felt like I, I could express myself in a way that I couldn't before, and, and even at that young age. And then she encouraged me to get into dance, which once again, I just it just felt like this is what I was supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, from day one. And um, uh, so I ended up, I, it was a jazz dance class. It wasn't ballet, it was jazz, which was a whole different thing altogether. Um, and so uh, I, I, ju- I just ended up really in involving myself with dance 110%. I got it. I was in a company. I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Mm-hmm. 
And it was this dance company in Canada. We ended up touring literally the world because we did these performances for the Canadian United uh, Nations uh, soldiers over Christmas. And we did awesome. Germany, yeah. Israel, Egypt, Cyprus. Um, so when I graduated from high school, I decided to pursue this dance thing. And I ended up in London, England, yeah. in a, a performing arts school that focused on dance. But it also, we had classes on acting and voice and, uh, and, and yeah, theater and, you know, all that stuff and singing. Yeah. And it, it sort of unexpectedly gave me a, a great foundation yeah. Yeah. Um, for performing arts in general. And I, while I was in London, I happened to audition as a dancer for this movie. And the director saw me auditioning and asked me if I could act. And so, I, of course, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I said, sure. The production, is that the Apple? That was the Apple. Yeah. And I ended up reading for that and, you know, auditioning. And I got the role. Yeah. So that was my transition. It was quick. You know, it was brutal. It was just like, bam. I was in there right over right my head. It. Yeah. Right into it. And, okay. um that that was the t transition or the beginning of the transition really because even after doing that movie i really really loved doing it and it was so interesting and uh, all that other stuff but i i wasn't sure that that's exactly what i wanted to do mm -hmm. um but things just started to snowball i got another movie in uh canada when i went home for christmas I ended up having a small role in Nighthawks, Sylvester Stallone's Nighthawks, in yes. when I went back to England. And then I decided to make the move to LA and um, the first, and, and things just started happening for me there. The first big show I did was Days of Our Lives, the yeah. soap opera. Yeah, that's what I got in my notes here, yeah. Yeah. About that? And, uh, uh, over, I think about 150 episodes, I think I read. I was on it for two years. I don't know exactly how many episodes mm -hmm. it was, but yeah. I was on it for two years. And um, that was an amazing experience as well. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I, how so? Uh, oh, uh, well, like, for instance, if you shoot a TV show, mm -hmm. you generally get a week to shoot it or so, a week, 10 days, depending on what it is. Like mm. a sitcom will be, well, you'll have rehearsal, 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 and then you'll shoot it in front of an audience, okay. you know, after all okay. the rehearsals. For about a week, you rehearse, um, and on camera. Uh, well, uh, uh, that that's in a studio. A regular a series uh, episode might be seven to ten days that you shoot. Um, a movie might be six to eight weeks for a you know an hour and a half show. Wow. A a, a, a um, soap opera episode, uh, Days of Our Lives, was an hour, and we had a day to yep. shoot it. Like wow. one day rehearsal, wow. you know, so it starts with blocking and then uh, camera rehearsal and then dress rehearsal and then you shoot it. And if you had a heavy storyline, I mean, a, an hour show is like over 100 pages generally. And if you have a heavy storyline, you might have to memorize like 50 pages of dialogue. And that is <laughs> so hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was hard. That was yeah. hard work. That so sense. I've... I, yeah, I'm a big, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm so impressed by soap opera actors that, you know, make their career doing this the stuff. The longevity of some of these folks are, that's amazing to me. Yeah. Really yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. And so. That, yeah, that kind yeah, of took ahead. care of that question. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about that. How much, and you, you answered it, uh, how much difference? So it's a, quite a bit of a difference in those performances <sighs> versus movies, TVs you know, things like that. So. It's really, Amazing. really hard. Yeah. I mean, every uh, sort of kind of acting is, is, is different. I mean, and then mm. acting on stage is different as well. Yeah. It's just a different uh, sort of sensibility and dynamic and the way uh, you connect with the audience is different. It's, yeah. um, it, so, but that's what makes it so incredible. It's never boring. Let me tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I've asked this before and, uh, it's interesting people's response. Um, mm -hmm. I've asked some actors and actresses that we've had on, is it difficult for you 
to mm -hmm. play a character that's totally opposite of you? Or is it easier? I've had mixed. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what is me? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, yeah. it's like, um, so the way I see myself and the way maybe other people see me could be completely two different things. For instance, when I started, I was always the girl next door, you know, the, the all American girl next door kind of a sure. character. Yeah. But, but, and so I, I learned to play that. I mean, or, or, you know, I became that character. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really feel like that's who I am. Who you are. Yeah. That's how other people saw me. Um, for instance, in, in the movie Night of the Comet, it was a yep. complete departure from all that. Right. But I really actually connected yeah. with that character more than I yeah. might with the girl next door kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but every character that you play, first of all, as an actor, you make specific choices of how you're going to play each scene or whatever. And, um, or how you're going to create this character or portray this character. And that's also so interesting about uh, the process is that it, it's so subjective. I mean, you can't say, oh no, this character has to be played this way. Every single actor would play a character a different way. Um, it can be written on the page, very specifically but you'll get something different from every single actor which makes it so fantastic yeah. and and then the audience either reacts to it or they don't react to it or whatever so but you know the characters again i i don't really know what exactly my character would be who i am right but every character that i play there is definitely a part of me in it. You know what I mean? That makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. Um, I've seen this somewhere. May not be your quote, hopefully, mm -hmm. but it, it's cool if it is. Mm -hmm. Acting is very personal. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to be like anyone else. Yeah. Uh, that same, some of that same research that I found had that quote. Yeah. Uh, that, which I thought I was awful, uh, awesome, uh, very cool. Um, so it's a personal thing to you. Um, you're at that acting, that gift. Yeah. Well, I think that it's a mistake to try to emanate mm -hmm. somebody else. And I think, um, some actors, yeah. especially when they're starting out, try to fall into that. They fall into that kind of um, persona. Path. Yeah persona yeah. yeah but they think that what they think they're supposed to be gotcha. and i really feel like that's a huge mistake because yeah. people don't want to see the Another same person or, yeah. every yeah. time or the yeah. same kind of they yeah. want to see something unique and something that they can relate to on some level as well and who who knows what that is it's di again it's it's not only different for every yeah. actor it's different for every audience member too yeah. um that's why it's so subjective it's like there's no you can't I, I also don't believe in people who are bad actors you know if if i mean i guess there's a certain way to you know judge that mm -hmm. but if the person is hundred percent into it have committed to the character have committed to the script have committed to whatever it is um you can't label somebody you can't label somebody yeah. it's it's again completely subjective <laughs> so um the, the most important thing is just as an actor just to commit hundred percent to whatever it is you're doing however it is you're doing just do it um, and the audience will be able to read that commitment and that because that's honesty as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, I and you 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 see uh, actors, you know, changing their body or their face or their, mm. you know, their style or whatever, mm -hmm. because they think that's what they should do. And yeah, it's, it's okay. always like yeah no the the most the the most important actors are always so unique 
you know, they, they're so in individual and, and unique in what it is they do and what they play. And, and that's what makes them interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When we kind of started contacting about, you know, getting together to do this, Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of my favorite movies I, as a matter of fact i just wrapped up weekend at bernie's last night no oh, you did <laughs> weekend at bernie's classic <laughs> the night of the comet mm -hmm. that you mentioned those mm -hmm. are the last or those are the two that i've seen recently uh -huh. um yeah you're right night of the comet it, it, it's one of those 80s teens movies that mm -hmm. you you were kind of like okay I, you took over to be like a you had to be kind of a leader I thought, like a leader. Mm -hmm. This whole right. world has changed, mm -hmm. and, you know, sisters got to depend on, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, I get what you're saying, and you kind of right. mentioned about Night of, Night of the Comet. Um, but the one, I, I'm curious about uh, the uh, the uh, movie I just talked about, Bur uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Um, great obviously great talented people in that movie oh yeah for um, sure um yeah and i think i read somewhere about the movie that they did they had stunt people do where i thought it was like mannequin stuff with bernie <laughs> like one guy broke his ribs trying you know doing the boat scene and all this. Mm -hmm. that so did they never use a like a dummy made up of him to do some of that stuff they did use a dummy. Yeah, um, oh, to. yeah, they had to. Yeah. Um, and and I'm not sure if if there were scenes where they were using a stunt person or not. Yeah. I know that Terry Kaiser, who played Bernie, mm -hmm. he it, when they first sort of took off in the boat, you mm -hmm. know, and he's in the back, kind of tied down. It was right. him, and they were hitting waves, and he was <laughs> bouncing. Yeah, and he actually. Uh, he injured himself. I'm not exactly sure what the injury was, but I think okay. he, he jammed his back pretty badly okay. uh, because having to maintain this kind of rigid character right, and then being bashed around back yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he suffered. He yeah. absolutely suffered. Wow. But then of course, when he's being the, Bernie's being dragged behind the boat itself right. and banging into buoys yeah. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was a uh, yeah. that was a dummy. Yeah, <laughs> it sure. was a dummy. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, there you go. Um, last of the Starfighter. The last Starfighter, yeah. Uh -huh, the last Starfighter. Mm -hmm. Um, Nighthawks. You mentioned. Mm -hmm. I was trying to just write down some of them that I've that I've seen you. I didn't know this one. Missed you. Mischief, I yeah. know. I gotta see that one. Mischief. You you should see it because it's yeah. really a Talk to wonderful. Talk about that one. Yeah. It's it's it, it it's um it doesn't get the credit it deserves. I feel like it's set in the fifties. Uh, the writer mm -hmm. uh, Noel Black. Um, it was sort of semi autobiographical. Um, he was like a nerd in the fifties and. It's a it's a really it's a teen um, you know story about kids and and all the stuff that they go through. Um, there's the the nerd. Uh, there's the the cool like new kid on the block who rides a motorcycle. Right. There, my character is kind of like the popular girl in school yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm dating like the coolest guy in school, but he's kind of a jerk. Um, and, uh, um, so it's, it's yeah. just sort of these different storylines kind of yeah. intermingled yeah, yeah. and it's very sweet. It's very authentically fifties. I mean, they did, uh, we shot it in Ohio mm -hmm. and, and they'd made up this little town in Ohio. They did the whole, they, re um dress the entire square so that it looked 50s it, it's it's a great i i absolutely recommend it it's just yeah. one of those little movies that kind of slipped in the cracks and, and yeah. was unrecognized again an, an incredible cast doug mckeon uh, kelly preston um yes right i mean it was a great cast <laughs> right. um and a really really sweet movie and so much fun because okay. we were all just kids in ohio together having a great old time yeah. yeah yeah that that struck my interest when i like i said when i was doing some research and i was like seeing who was in it and all right. that good stuff 
Yeah, I think it came out like 84, 85. Yeah, like yeah. So, yep. uh, yeah, that's definitely one I want to look at. Yeah, um, it, it's very sweet. It was originally called Heart and Soul, which was uh, yeah. a, a, a more appropriate title, I feel like. But they were that was sort of the era of like things like Porky's and stuff like that. Right. So they were trying to sort of piggyback on that by calling it Mischief. And the, the poster is kind of this like, you know. Yeah. It kind of... Uh, sexy little thing with Kelly Preston yeah, and Doug yeah, and, and things yeah. like that. Laying but out of the car. And, right, right, right. Yeah, which, yeah. which is part of the movie in a way, yeah. but it really wasn't a sex romp comedy. Right, it was right. just a really sweet story about kids in the 50s just okay. trying to get through high school, you know? Right, right. It was good. I really liked it. Okay. I'm going to um, check that one out for sure. Yeah, for um, sure. Once again, so, some of the information that I looked up, this was cool. You auditioned for The Outsiders. I did. Yes. Yeah. Cherry Valance. Was... Cherry Valance. Yeah. I yeah. was. Uh, so that's right. I... That's accurate. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. Uh, very young. Yeah. Was I... Very green. Talk to me about that new. one. Yeah, that's cool. I remember, so it was the Diane Lane role. She yep. ended up doing it. Yep. And, and I remember auditioning. Um, we were all like, they had us come in, a whole bunch of us, like the, all these actors to portray these different characters. We came in all at once, which is very unusual. And um, uh, I, I remember a scene that I had with Tom Cruise, who was also not Tom Cruise yet. You know, we were all sure. very young and new. Right. And um, I remember that specifically because we have this thing and he says something snarky to me. And I had a glass of water. I was just, I had water because I was thirsty or whatever. And I did this thing. He says, he was behind me over my shoulder and he says his line. And I look at him and I take my water and I splash it in his face. <laughs> This was just something I did uh, spontaneously. Diane Lane did that in the movie. Darn her. <laughs> <laughs> she, took my, she took my yeah. bit. Yeah. But she was, of course, she's fantastic. She was yeah. fantastic. But that was, I remember Tom Cruise specifically, because I thought it was super cute. And um, walking out of the audition with him and thinking, you oh, know, gee, I wonder if he'll ask me out or something like that. Yeah. At, but boy, oh boy. Tom Cruise was laser focused even back then. He was like, wow. he was like, he knew he wanted to be a movie star. Boy, you know, none yeah. of this, you know, dating junk or whatever. I'm sure he dated, but you know what I mean? Like, I was like, right. I'm like, oh, he's cute. And right. he's like, hey, you know, I got to get this role. And like, yeah. you know. That's, so, that's interesting. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. because, he was uh, a driven guy. Yeah. We had, uh, we had Kim Jensen who played, uh, uh, Edna in Footloose. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we, we had her on recently nice. and she said, um, one take bake for Kevin oh, Bacon. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said he was like, you're saying when you said laser, I think that's the same word she used. Is uh, that right? So, you know, she said he was young, you know, in his early twenties, mm -hmm. but man, was focused, went to work, got it done. And they didn't have to mess around. I mean, they were, he was done. Yeah. And driven. That, but yeah, this so kind of sounds like the same kind of you know driving point to the both of them. Right, yeah. right. Cool stuff. The other, well, the other one they, I re they've remember. They've been successful. Is, yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, that yeah. is definitely uh, a quality that yeah. helps. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. remember another person I felt the same way about was Demi Moore. Hmm. Boy, you would hmm. see her at auditions. Boy, she was just like, bam. And, um, and honestly, I was like, this is so much fun. I'm like, this is great. It's the 80s. We're having a great time. We're doing yeah. all these movies. And, right. And um, yeah. So they, some of them were just laser focused on it. Yeah. They worked it, man. And gotcha. the, that's uh, that got them where they are today. Yeah. Yeah, for Interesting. sure. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, curious about this. Any of your kids involved in the acting business? Mm -hmm. Um, my daughter uh, did theater through high school, and she minored in it in college. Mm -hmm. 
and she has a wonderful singing voice. So she she did Pirates of Penzance, and she did a lot of musicals and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know where it requires a big voice, which she has. Um, but and actually, we did a movie together. She had a small role in a movie that I did called um, Love and Dancing. Okay. Um, and she had this little cameo and she really loved doing that. But as she got older, she, she, she still enjoys acting. As she, uh, her, uh, so a group of friends from college created this um, acting group after college, which she has been in several productions. And in fact, I've been in two. They invited me to be a part of it wow. as well, which has been so, was so cool. But sure. she, it's kind of, it wasn't something that she really wanted to do. And the singing part, she yeah. felt like she just, it, 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 maintaining that kind of a voice it takes so much work. And she was interested in too many other things yeah. that she just wasn't willing to yeah. like, do it it's just too much and she's yeah. she's very interested in so many other things environmental science for instance um go. she's worked for some food companies where she's very interested in um uh you know less uh people who need food and whatnot and helping uh -huh. them and uh -huh. the environment and how it all in is incorporated sure, sure. and and even theater enters into that frankly so She's and she loves children. She's very interested in children's education, um, which she's been doing for a long time. She loves French. So she's, she's, um, I mean, I think the theater and the acting has mm -hmm. helped her in mm -hmm. what she wants to do in Chasing, her career. Yeah, yeah. But, but she doesn't, she's not that, not she's the, not interested in being yeah, a full time actor. That passion, passion, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my son um, is, uh, he's, He's very into uh, the environment as well, yeah. and he's he works for a councilman in Manhattan. He's he's gotten into the whole. Uh, he got his um, he got his master's degree in urban planning, so he's he's uh, working in that sort of field in um, you know local politics, frankly. Wow. So he's really into all that. He was a jazz drummer in college. Hannah did piano for years. Do you want to? Uh, there we go. There. We go. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they they they're very talented. Yeah. In the arts, but neither one of them wanted to get into the whole acting thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what are you currently working on? So, um, currently, well, I'm still. Um, I did another movie most recently with the same person who did Love and Dancing. He's a big West Coast swing guy fan, and he's mm. done. He did Love and Dancing which was the theme was West Coast Swing. And then he did an, uh, more recently another movie called um, uh, Ask Me to Dance, which has that theme. And it's a very, very sweet uh, romantic story about to a, boy, a guy and a woman who um, are looking for love. And, you know, throughout the story, they just, they just keep missing each other. And finally, they they meet on the dance floor, and it's quite sweet. So I had a little role in that. And um, but what I've been focusing on more recent for the last couple of years, actually, is a is a script that I wrote and will direct, and has been optioned by a production company here in in Canada. Um, that we're just we're in pre production basically. So that's what I've been spending a lot of time working on breaking down the script and doing all this all this it's all very new for me but it's yep. really really interesting and i've done a little bit of directing a couple of shorts um i love directing so it's something that i would like to pursue a lot more and yeah. this this project is kind of you know it's it's very personal and um looking forward to yeah. how this all unfolds. It would be probably like a TV movie of some sort, or it could actually be a series as well. Awesome. Catherine, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you'll hold oh, right there, you. let me close it out. Okay. And uh, yeah, we appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. It's a real pleasure being here.
to thank our sponsors, Hudson's Flags and More, better known and operated. Also, the Nesting Project of Smyrna, Tennessee. We appreciate all their support. Check them out online. All right, folks, that'll end another one for us. DH, uh, sorry you had to work, man. I'll get to yeah. I'll get to work next week, I guess. Get back in the saddle for it. Um, but we appreciate your time, Catherine and Mary Stewart. Yeah, it was my pleasure. To you and your family and all that great stuff, and uh, um, all the best of luck. Oh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I'm sorry, you know. I'm thank you so much for accommodating me timing wise. I really, no really problem. appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so <laughs> okay. much. Okay. Right, thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Take care.